Everything happens by chance that we are here by divine appointment. And as I acknowledge that you heard the call, you answered, I acknowledge our viewing audience as well, that you tuned in this moment because there's something here for you. And there's something here for all of us. And as I say every Sunday, I do this for me. If you get something out of it, wonderful. Because the minute we think that we do anything for anyone else, it puts it in a different realm. But when I love what I do and do what I love and that spills over into the energy field, everyone is uplifted. So this morning, we're going to talk about the wisdom of our cells. Bruce Lifton wrote a book called The Biology of Belief, where he was doing a study on cells. And what he discovered is that the material of the cells were totally dependent on the environment and the energy that was being directed at the cells. He said, I had these little petri dishes, and I, he said, the fate of the cells depended on the energy that I was projecting. So what I love about our way of life and that we have been saying for millenniums, going back to Plotinus, going back to Jesus, who became the Christ, when he said, it is done unto you as you believe in your heart. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What we value, the energy that we have uh, about our life, where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. The heart is the doorway to the soul. It is the feeling nature. So when we acknowledge the wisdom of ourselves that we begin to learn to language consciously. We are all conditioned to, you know, all the vernacular things that we say. That we say, just kidding. But the greatest, I mean, the greatest sense of humor is the universe doesn't know that and just gives us what we say. What we put into the law of mind returns to us, pressed down, shaken together, and flowing over into every area of our life. Trained thought is far more powerful than untrained thought to direct our energy. And if this has an effect on little cellular membranes, it has an effect on us. Dr. Masurai Emoto had petri dishes and little, little tiny drops of water and from a little dropper and that he would project energy and as he projected love and appreciation and gratitude, this little drop of water went into the most beautiful, like a little crystal, snow crystal, in perfect symmetry. It was amazing. And the first time he said that ever happened, because he'd been working with the energy for a long time, he said, I sat down and I wept. I was so joyous that this proof of where thought goes, energy flows. And he had children come in and project energy. And when they projected names like Adolf Hitler, it would go globular. It would not go into this perfect crystalline form. It would just go into this mass of, of, of like a blob. But when they focused love, gratitude, the energy of light, when he said the word Mother Teresa, it went into this perfect crystalline form. Where thought goes, energy flows. I was at the grocery store and they said, would you like some help out? And I said, yes, I would. And they go, oh, uh, got a back problem. <laughs> and I went, shh, my cells are listening. <laughs> okay, all righty then, we'll help you out. But the truth is, our cells are listening. So as we become more conscious and begin to language consciously, energetically, what happens? We go to a higher vibratory frequency. We begin to open in amazing ways. And I hear so many people say, oh yeah, had a senior moment. Yeah, stop that. You know, we've been doing that forever, not just when we were seniors. <laughs> How many times in our life, I mean, I could think as a teenager, I would open the fridge and think, ooh, what did I come here for? <laughs> and look in the fridge. We have to stop that. We have to realize that we are absolutely deathless, timeless beings of light. And one thing my daughter was saying, your, your energy is so amazing, Mother. And I said, I have learned to pace myself. Uh, when you're, we're younger, we just kind of 
do this, that, and the other, we're out in the universe, but I have learned to pace myself and where I put my energy. So, you know, that I do acknowledge, that as we learn to pace ourselves and realizing that everything is energy. And someone said, and this is a true story from Sarasota, Florida, and it's, it's uh, uh, the name of the, the byline was, if you're going to have a senior moment, make it memorable. And it was about this darling little old woman coming out of the grocery store, and she went to her car, and she saw three young men in her car. She actually had a handgun in her purse, pulled it out, and said, I have a gun, and I know how to use it. Get out of my car. <laughs> they just, like, they didn't need a second, you know, opportunity. They just opened the doors and fled. And she put all her things in the trunk, and she proceeded to get into the driver's seat, and she was so... Uh, miscombobulated and so, you know, a little bit confused by, you know, having four young men in her car. And she was, you know, having a problem with the ignition and kept trying the ignition. And she kind of noticed there were two six-packs of beer and a Frisbee and a football. And she realized that she had the wrong car. <laughs> so she got out of the car. She took her things out of the trunk. She found her car four cars down. <laughs> got in and drove straight to the Sarasota, Florida police station to report what had happened. And so she's telling the sergeant, you know, I thought it was my car and, and, and these four young men were in the car and she goes, and it wasn't my car. And he just could not stop laughing. And he said, see those four young men down there? They're reporting a mad, curly-haired, white-haired woman with a gun that pulled it on him and stole absolutely carjacked their car <laughs> and no charges the article said no charges were pressed and that the sergeant is still laughing so we all have our moments and when we have those moments let's make them memorable so that we can learn from them we don't want the you know that amazing cycle that keeps coming up and we don't learn anything from it we want to learn and grow and expand and be all that we can be with that energy. One of my favorite stories about DNA and cellular memory is about a man named Joe, and he would go around telling everybody, you know, my father died at 52 of a heart attack, my grandfather died at 52 of a heart attack, my great-grandfather died at 52 of a heart attack, I probably will too. And he would put that out into the ethers in the universe. And lo and behold, he turned 52, and about five months in, he had a heart attack and he died. And at the memorial service, his cousin said, you know, it was really, really odd about Joe dying at 52. He said, because Joe was adopted. <laughs> so what the mind of man and woman can conceive and believe, the mind of man and woman can achieve. And so... Those things that are in the energy field that we identify with, you know, at a DNA cellular level, we take it on. And then we act it out in our daily life, which is our temple and our religion. So if we have a choice, and I think if I have a choice about it, I want to choose that which is for my highest and my best good. Do I have lower energy days? We all do. So we rest. That to me is a trigger to rest, to rejuvenate, to recreate our energy rather than saying, oh God, I'm just so tired. And what happens to our cells when we say that? They move to a lower vibratory frequency. And then we, be, we go into fatigue. And then from fatigue, we go, we gotta just lay down. And then we use the S word, the four letter S word, S-I-C-K. Then we say we're sick. And the truth is, when we experience dis-ease, we're sending a message to the universe that that is a cleanse. We're harmonizing, balancing, attuning, and we're heightening the energy field. So if we're in business and we're buying into the economy thing, then that needs to get our attention, to lift ourselves out of the law of averages and place ourselves within the law of individual selection. And when we step out of that, and I love, Linda and I were having a conversation. She said, we just cannot buy into this lack, limitation, and scarcity thing. And, I, and she was sharing a book that she was reading. And I said, you are so absolutely right. 
because as we open to the universe and we accept our good and our unexpected good, we are sending out that message to the universe. And out of sending that message out, it's got to go someplace. So why not begin to lift ourselves up out of the condition? And it doesn't mean we don't go through things. I started out last year with a major surgery. And every doctor, nurse, and attendant was so loving and so caring. We started out with a prayer. And we invited the doctors in. And uh, Dr. Samantha was there, and Dr. Basha, and my daughter, and we did this wonderful prayer. We set the tone to move through this experience, knowing that we are supported, and thank God when we need medical science, it's there. And that everything is responding. And as we move through these experiences, we come out on the other side. It's not bad karma, good karma, it's just what is at the moment. And I said, and I ended up the years going to Africa. I was the keynote speaker, speaking to 25,000 students and faculty. Then I was appointed to the Nobel Peace Prize Commission, sent to Norway, Oslo. And then I was voted in as the president of the International Foundation for World Peace and Research. And I am going back to Norway uh, tomorrow. So interestingly enough, we start out with, with needing to recreate something in our life. It's not bad, it's not good. It's an experience. We are the ones that put bad and good on things. Yes, we want to feel good. We want things to unfold. We want it to be glorious. And when we go through that momentary contraction, hey, it means go within to the secret place of the Most High to pray to your Father, Mother, God in secret and know that you are acknowledged openly by the outward demonstrations of your lives. Some of us come in with health issues that we need to confront, we need to open up to the healing. Some of us come in with about relationships. Others come in uh, about uh, our finances. So the truth is, it's all energy. It's all energy. So if you're in sales and you think, oh God, the economy, and you know no one's buying anything, guess what, we're gonna get that result. And there are those that say, hey, I am a magnet for success and good fortune. Bring it on. And amazing things happen because we realize God is our source. That when we say and we state into the law of mind, I am happy, healthy, prosperous, and free. That we're sending out that message to the universe. And it's pretty wonderful. And when we go through the other moments to realize it, I'm going within. This is a signal for me to go within, to meditate, to really allow myself to take this teaching at the next level so that I can spring forth with greater awareness and enlightenment. And it's interesting, when Buddha was asked, you know, are you a god? Are you an angel? He said, no, I am awake. I am awake. And to be awake to the moment, to realize that this moment is eternal. That we all have that which is immortal within us. That we're all going to pass through the veil. And we're going to take our consciousness with us. And when we take our consciousness with us, we meet up with other energies. We meet up with the energy of those like souls. And I believe in soul community that we do find each other no matter where we are. Uh, when I went to Norway, the last time I met up with my Facebook, a friend who teaches yoga, Christina Danielson. And it was not a first time meeting, it was a joyful reunion because we had communicated at really very deep levels on Facebook. And I did the same when I went to England and met my two very special Facebook friends. We went to Glastonbury. We had this amazing meeting and reunion, and we could feel that energy. We recognize each other, don't we? We recognize that we're all part of that soul community. We know intuitively that we've walked this path before in other lifetimes, and I believe in past lives. I believe that we come together at each new level to learn something to grow and to unfold in amazing ways. And that's why I do this work. And I love this way of life. And sometimes it's not easy. And my daughter used to say, you know, 
my mother really does practice this way of life, and sometimes it's so irritating. <laughs> and, you know, there are times we don't want to be thinking positive. We don't want to look for the higher, you know, silver lining. We want to just be there, like when Lucy was, was crying, and Charlie Brown came up and said, Oh, Lucy, don't, you know, fear not, Lucy. Things will get better. And she just, she kept crying. He said, Lucy, and he just kept trying to make her feel better and talk about all the good things and think positive and do all the right things and have fun and eat ice cream. And suddenly she just said, I don't want to feel better. <laughs> just leave me alone. So sometimes we just don't want to feel better in that moment. And so we can just, like, let it all go and let it hang out and then set the timer for two to five minutes, even five minutes is pushing it, and then get off it and get on with our lives. We have a wonderful life to lead. We have people to meet, and we have things to do, and places to go, and energy to exchange. We have such an opportunity. And as the seasons go, they will unfold. The seasons unfold. So when we say our cells are listening, that we want to bless this body is the temple of the living God, of which and through whom which we do such a good work. So as we bless our body temple, we nurture it, we allow ourselves to feel the energy that's flowing through us. We walk the good walk. The path of freedom is in taking responsibility for our lives, not beating ourselves up every time we feel like we have a misstep, but to recognize that we learn, we grow, and we unfold. And there was a, a father that brought his four sons to him, and he said, I want to, you to go out, and I want you to view this tree. And he sent the oldest son out in winter to view the pear tree. And the son came back, and he said, what did you see? And he said, I saw an old, gnarly tree bent and crooked. And then he sent the second son out, and he, he said, all right, this is the season now of spring. What did you see? He said, oh no, I saw a tree full of leaves and buds and full of promise. And he sent his third son out. And he brought him back and he said, what did you see? And he said, I saw a tree blossoming and so beautiful. And he sent the fourth son out. And he came back and said, what did you see? And he said, I saw a tree laden with fruit. And it was so beautiful that I picked a pear and I took a bite out of it. It was just heaven on earth. And he said, sons, come closer. He said, I want you to recognize that when you go through the seasons of your life, sometimes it's dark, it's dreary, it seems bent over. Other times it's filled with promise and buds. And other times he said it's beautiful with blossoms and then the fruit of the harvest comes into play. Do not judge your life by any season that you may have gone through. Look at all the seasons. Look at the entire circle of life that allows us to know that we are in the world but not of it. We are of a higher spiritual vibratory frequency that allows us to be here with love and laughter and the exchange of energy, and to be supported when we need that support. So this morning, what I know at the deepest level is that when we step out into life, life supports us because we know we are never alone. I love our way of life. I love the opportunity that we have to go to that next level, to realize the wisdom at a cellular level, and to realize that we are going where? Higher yet. Where are we going? Higher yet. Where? Higher yet. And so it is. Namaste and God bless you.